things and uh, show that they, you know, disprove that. Mm -hmm. So that's how Emily's Vow and Amy's Choice and Samantha's Secret came about. Okay. And then the publisher asked me if I could make it a fourth story to make it a series instead of a trilogy, which I did. So I added Evelyn's Promise. And then I decided to add in Elizabeth's Hope to introduce the rest of the series. So okay. you've got a novella and then the four novels. Sure. So you okay, so you said that your your publisher asked you to expand that. How so are these how is has your publishing journey been with these novels? Did you did you approach a publisher where you asked to write these novels? How did that process work? I approached the publisher okay. with, with the trilogy concept and they did a market analysis and I looked at the books and they agreed it's a hybrid publisher so it's not like submitting to Random House or something it's it's okay. it's much more of a collaboration between the between e-publishing works and myself yeah. to, to get these stories out and design the covers and all of that and they do some of the marketing and I do some of the marketing and um they the series tend to sell better in romance than trilogies do so he asked me to add another book to make it a series okay so and I had left enough characters in the other three stories that could have had a story told that I could do that. So that's sure. what I was Okay, wonderful. Okay, so so with the process of you getting your books published and then working through it, what is that like to go from like idea to actually published book? Um, how, about how long does it take you to write these and then get them officially published? What is it like to pick the covers? Like. You know, for for somebody who is totally new to this and thinking, I would also like to get involved in in writing romance novels. What does that behind the scenes look like? Well, that varies depending on on how fast you write and mm -hmm. what, what genre you write in. Um, if you're writing contemporary, you can, and you're doing a shorter uh, format, you know, forty to fifty thousand words, and you can crank them. I know people that can write those in in a month or two. Um, for the historicals that I do, I, I try to be very careful to reflect the authenticity, the authentic nature of the, the situation that my characters find themselves in. So I do quite a bit of research. So that takes a little longer. So for me to write a historical romance, it was it was taking me about four to five months to write and then have edited and then um, getting the covers done in the book format. That takes another couple of months because when you're indie publishing or hybrid publishing, it doesn't take as long as it would if I were to go through Berkeley or go through one of the traditional publishers. Yeah. Um, but it, it's very freeing to be able to, well, for instance, I, I self-published my uh, paranormal romances, and I'm starting a supernatural historical series that's not romance. It has romantic elements. It's not romance. It's, it's more about a haunted roadside inn in 1821 Alabama so it's very gothic natured um, but it's very freeing to be able to say okay this is what I want to write and this is how long I want it to be this is what I want the cover to look like um, of course I tap I tap my cover artist and I have a, a lady that does my book formatting for me because I just I'd rather spend my time researching and writing than yeah. adding the book and getting getting all that done but once the, once the files are all, once I have all the files together, then I, I upload mm -hmm. them available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble, et cetera. Okay. Oh, great. So let's say like, like from day one when you have an idea to the moment it's officially published, about how long on average do your books take? For my romances, it's, yeah. it takes, I'm going to, I'm going to say eight months. Okay. Um, it could be shorter or, and it could be longer, but I'm going to say eight months. Okay, excellent. And then how do you market your books traditionally? Are there are there book signings you go to, or you know, besides you know, obviously this podcast that we're that we're on talking about your books? How do you get the word out about what you're working on? Well, I have a newsletter um, okay. that where where people can sign up if they want to know what's coming, where I'm going to be. I I do go out to book signings and book conventions. Um, I'm heading to uh, Maryland uh, next month, the end of next month, for the Historical Novel Society Conference and Book Signing. They have a Reader's Festival there, so I'll be there signing books. And there's some local things. I do uh, talks at my local library branches mm -hmm. and book clubs and things like that. So I, I do get around. Um, a couple of years ago, 
my husband and I drove up to Maine to go to one. So it was a one day thing and we, we tacked a vacation onto it. So it yeah. made it more worthwhile to drive that far, but we had a good time and it was a good turnout. Um, I got to meet a fan that I didn't know I even had. So yeah. that was, that was a high point right there. Oh, that's great. Congratulations. Thank okay. you. Yeah. Okay. So, so you said you're expanding into, into new kind of genres. Where do you see your writing, let's say in the next five years? Well, my, I have an agent that's shopping some historical fiction for me. It's more women's fiction. Okay. And I'm hoping I'm hoping that she's going to find a buyer. I have a we're, we've been talking about a series of um, based on the first ladies, mm-hmm. several of them. I've written Martha Washington's story, which was a lot a lot of research and uh, very interesting to write. It's the only thing I've ever written that's in first person, which is interesting. But um, I'm hoping she can find a buyer for that series, and I have another historical um, fiction that is a World War II um, Baltimore home front story mm-hmm. that um, I'm going to have edited next month and hope to have either give that back to my agent or self-publish it sometime in the near future. Sure. So I, I like the historical fiction. I like that even more than the romance, but, mm-hmm. but and even, like I said, the supernatural historical has romantic elements because I just that's just part of me. Yeah. yeah. Is there one of these that you write that resonates more with your readers and sells better, or is it just, or is that not as as much of a um, a push for you right now? I'm I'm right now I'm trying to get the word out that my books are out there. It's a it's really it's a difficult time to get visibility. So I have found that when I talk about what I do and the characters and the situations that I get more interest. So um, I'm hoping to gain more visibility, but the, the hybrid publisher for my, the historical romances, they're American Revolution okay. uh, um, set in Charleston. So I think of them as my Charleston series. Um, <laughs> Evelyn's Promise was had a, a a discounted price back in January and actually made Amazon bestseller list for that category that her book was in. So oh, great. that was cool. I became a bestselling author that month. Yeah. <laughs> so that was nice. So I think I'm gaining some traction. I think I'm getting some visibility and the more I get, then I'm hoping that the more people will check out my books and see if they like them too. Yeah, definitely. Well, congratulations about being a bestselling author. That's amazing. Thank you. So, because of the fact that you you tap into so many different genres and so many different areas and go from technical writing to historical fiction writing, how, how do you, I guess, approach those times when maybe you're you're putting a foot into a new market and you feel a little bit fearful and you feel maybe unsure of whether or not you can jump into that category? How do you approach fear in those instances and overcome them? Um, trying a new category isn't fearful for me. Um, I, I just love what I write. I wouldn't write it if I didn't. Um, so I just hope others will like it as much as, mm-hmm. or at least like it, <laughs> yeah. they like it as much or not. Um, so I don't know that, that it's fear so much as, um, an uncertainty about how to proceed uh, that I have to work through. So my husband will tell you, I'm always saying, I got to go figure out something else now. Yeah. <laughs> There's always something new to figure out as an author, um, some technology or some angle or how, how do you write a certain, um, for instance, in writing Martha Washington's story, there's a conversation that I have included between Martha and three different Georges, because they were all friends, George Washington, George Mason, and George Fairfax. And they all lived in the same area of Mount Vernon in, in Virginia. And so they would have gotten together on occasion. But how do I have a conversation between them and distinguish them so that the reader knows which George? So that there's always something that has to be figured out. So there's always that uncertainty, more so than fear, I think. I, I don't yeah. get afraid of it very much. Okay. Well, it's good to know. So let's actually you just mentioned that. How do you do that? So you've got three Georges, historical figures. How do you keep track of which George is supposed to speak in which style and would say, you know, certain words? In on your like in your system, how do you keep tabs on that? 
how do you organize your thoughts so that it, it does make a logical and, and, and uh, progresses accordingly? Well, in that scene, I just, I just put myself in Martha's place and figured out how she might have referred to her husband versus Lord Fairfax versus George Mason. So I just, you know, said she would talk about her husband and then she would talk about Lord Fairfax, you know, that kind of thing. So, so the reader can distinguish them. I have no clue, obviously, how Martha actually <laughs> addressed these three Georges. Um, yeah. She might have had pet names for them, but I don't know what they are, what it would have been. So, <laughs> you know, anything's possible. We don't we don't know every detail of the historic figures that, that we read yeah. about. Yeah, that's true. Do you ever get writer's block? And if so, how do you push past it? I get procrastination is what I get. <laughs> it's... it's I know what I need to write, but I don't want to do it. Okay. <laughs> it's an sure. interesting thing, and it seems like it happens more as I get towards the end of the book. And I, I, I heard one explanation could be that it's you don't want to let go of the characters, but that's not always true because I'm writing a series, so those characters are going to come back. Mm -hmm. So I just I, I think I start getting into sort of a self doubt about did I tell this story as well as I could, you know, and then I start second guessing myself. So that uncertainty comes back again. Sure. Um, to bite me in the butt, but um, you know, it's I I don't typically get I don't it's not that I don't know what I need to write. I usually have the scenes mapped out before I start writing. Mm -hmm. As far as what needs to happen in the scene, I don't have every detail, every bit of dialogue figured out, but I have I have a, an outline enough of an outline that I can I know that like when I sit down to write tomorrow. I can. I'm going to read the scene description that I have and who's in it and how they're supposed to be feeling, and then I'll just start writing it. So okay. it's, it's not. I don't. That's why I don't get the block. I think is because I figure that out before I sit down to write. Sure. So as as someone who's written series, how do you know when you're done with a book, and do you map out your series ahead of time, or or do they just at the end of the book? Do you feel like this is enough for right now. Now I'll just start an, another book in this series. Or how do you approach all of that? Okay. Um, so when I sat, when I decided I was going to write the Fury Falls In series, I sat down and I figured out what the overarching story goal is. Um, and then I figured out each of the the books that would need to happen to get to that story goal. I don't have every, I don't even have an outline for book two. I just finished book one, okay. uh, The Haunting of the Fury Falls In. I know I have the titles for all six books. I have core conflict of what's going to happen in each of those six books, and I know the main characters in those six books. Now that I finished book one, I can sit down and flesh out book two which will also start to help me flesh out book three, because I, I need to keep this uh, a thread going between them. Um, for every element when you're writing, every scene and every chapter and every book, in a series in particular, um, you need to have a hook at the end of each of those elements so that your reader wants to turn the page or get the next book. And so I want to make sure I have those figured out before I sit down to write. Okay. Good to know. Is that, is that yes. clarifying? <laughs> yeah, yes, it is. <laughs> I'm always curious to hear how how writers like their their process and how they organize things and think long term like that. So right. with with everything that you've done and experienced so far, what would you say has been the best advice that you have ever received? Write the story you want to read. That's the best advice I've ever received. Write the story you want to read because. We each have our own way of telling a story, and mm -hmm. we each have our own stories to tell. Mm -hmm. um, I think the second best advice was to have something to say. What are you trying to say with what you're doing? So have have a you know a story goal. Um, okay. I wouldn't necessarily call it a, a morale. Sure. Something you want to say. Um, for instance, the for the Fury Falls in series, my overarching shortcut name for a theme for that series is unconditional love of family leads to happiness. Okay. And that does not mean that they're happy all the way through this series, but at the end of the series, they figure that out. Mm -hmm. so, mm. 
So that's what I'm, I'm trying to convey through what happens in each book in the series. 